I know it's been like a hundred years since I've done a long form video, but I've been trying to post some more. But I recently got engaged, so woo! It's been a busy couple of months, so just if you're still here on this channel, I love you and thank you so much for supporting this channel as you do. I have plenty of ideas for this channel and some new things coming to our Etsy shop as well. So if you're interested in all that, then definitely consider subscribing if you're new. And if you're not new, then just hold on and hang in there because there's gonna be a lot more content coming. If you're new here, my name is Carla. I am a dog mom of four. <laughs> That's Basil. I've been a dog mom for 11 years now. I have two senior dogs and two adult dogs now. So if you are interested in multi-dog household tips, then definitely stick around this channel and consider subscribing. Other than that, let's get to it. Finally, let's get into this video. So the first thing to consider if you are getting a dog and it's the number one thing that I tell everybody that you need to think about is whether the dog that you're thinking about is going to fit your lifestyle. So if you are only planning to go hiking with your dog like once or twice a month, then you don't need a hunting or hiking dog. You can just get a regular dog that is going to be able to go out on long walks a couple times a month and then also chill in your house while you're not going hunt, while you're not going hiking, not hunting. Or both. Now, if you are like a marathon runner though, and you want to have your dog running with you all the time, like multiple times a week, then definitely consider more of a sport dog that has a bigger lung capacity that can withstand that kind of training and environment all the time. But most people, let's say, are not marathon runners and are probably not going hiking multiple times a week, but if you still want to do some cool activities with your dogs every now and then, then maybe consider those activities as part of your dog's life in the long run. So if you are going swimming a lot, then maybe consider dogs that are used to the water or that like the water. Or if you are going more on like a trail run, then definitely consider dogs that are more built for that. So. Just think about your overall activities and what you want to achieve with your dog. Okay, now you might be thinking like, okay, well, wh what does that have to do with anything? I need to know like which dog to get and what if I just want him to be in my house and I don't have any really activities that I like to do with my dog because I don't have a dog yet. Well, don't worry because I need you to visualize and make a vision board of what you want your life to look like with this dog because in the long run, you're going to have to cater to that because your dog's gonna need it, depending on the kind of breed that you get. So this is the part where I urge you to be realistic with yourself. The lifestyle that you're living right now that you've been living this whole time without a dog is the lifestyle that you can sustain because that's the one that you've been living. So don't start thinking that now all of a sudden you're gonna be an avid hiker if you haven't been hiking without a dog. You know, it's gonna be twice as hard to go hiking with a dog because you're gonna need more gear, you're gonna need to take care of someone else, you're gonna need to take them and bring water and all these things. So just make sure that the lifestyle that you're envisioning is actually realistic and that you can sustain that in the long run. With that said, some great breeds that are kind of like four by four, I call them, is a Labrador. Of course, they can pretty much do anything. They can go hiking, they can go on short runs. I wouldn't recommend two long runs, but if you get an American style Labrador, then maybe they can withstand a little bit more field work than an English lab, but that's something that you can research. Once you get to a breed that you like, you can research the specific of that breed and if there's any variations of that breed as well. But the Labrador Retriever is always my number one choice for first time dog owners that want a large dog that can pretty much do anything. They can come and chill out with you outside. They can go swimming, they can go hiking, they can go on short runs. They're easy to maintain. They don't really need detangling or grooming that often. You know, they are kind of low maintenance dogs. The only thing is that you do need to cater to them being potentially overweight. So as long as you keep an eye on that and do a little bit of research on how to best take care of Labrador, then you'll be golden for everything that you wanna do. Another breed that I would consider if you are a first time dog owner that likes to do a lot of outdoor activities, and I mean a lot, like you're going on multiple walks a day, you're getting your 10K steps every day, I would say get probably like an Aussie Shepherd. A lot of people love Aussie Shepherds, especially an Aussie Mini. Um, you can do a lot of activities with them. They're also very resilient. They can withstand a lot of weather conditions, so you're not gonna have any trouble with them. The only thing is that they are high energy, so if you're not getting your 10K steps a day, 
then maybe don't consider this breed if you're not willing to get to that level. Another thing to consider is your apartment rules. If you're living in an apartment or in an HOA community, then definitely consider the rules of the HOA and your apartment. I know sometimes we forget about these things, but there's a lot of breed restrictions and there's also a lot of weight restrictions in certain communities. So just make sure that you're taking a look at that before you decide to get a dog. If you think that you are not going to look at that and you're gonna get a dog and then you're just gonna make them your emotional support animal, just know that not every single community ask for the same kind of documentation sometimes you need a written letter from an actual doctor sometimes you just need the certificate but all those things i would talk about with your landlord or with your hoa before you get another dog or your first dog so that you're not caught off guard when they're like no we don't accept that another thing that i would highly highly encourage is to make sure that you go on rover app or website so that you can check how much it's going to cost you in your area for dog boarding, dog sitting, dog walking. If you need to leave your dog for daycare, you'll be able to see what people are charging in your area and that way you can gauge like, yeah, I'll be able to do that if an emergency comes or if I go on vacation or if I'm at work or things like that. And one more thing that you need to consider is also learning a little bit about how to train your dog, especially if you're getting a puppy or if you're getting a new dog that hasn't had any training ever. So if you're getting a dog from the shelter and you don't really know their history, they don't really have a lot of training, kind of look up on YouTube if you're already on here. Look up on YouTube some people that can help you with the transition of bringing your dog from the shelter into your home and kind of teaching them the boundaries and new rules of their new environment. If you're getting a puppy, a person that I recommend that I watch all the time is Stoney Dennis on YouTube. He's amazing. I think he does a great job at kind of doing minimal training, but more of like desensi desen desensitization, desensitization, environmental training. Let's go with that. So he kind of teaches you how to build confidence in your dog to make sure that they are developing properly and that they're not scared and that they are able to ask for help when they need help, but also kind of solve their own problems. So he has a lot of good content around that and how you can teach your dog confidence because in the end, if you have a confident dog, then you'll have a great dog. Other people that I recommend on YouTube that are great to watch if you are dealing with any kind of, if you already got a dog and you're seeing any kind of like resource guarding or some weird training stuff that you don't know what to deal with then definitely go to solid canine training on youtube on facebook they do so many lives on facebook and i believe they're on youtube live now too they have so many channels but you can ask them direct questions and they can help you with your specific problem and they're just a really really great free resource they help dogs every day become better dogs and if you're looking and you see that your dog has certain behavioral problems that you don't know how to address because it's your first time, definitely go to Solid Canine Training because they have helped me and my dog so much and I just honestly love them. So just go over to their channel and see what they have to offer if you're dealing with any kind of reactivity or behavioral problems. One last thing to consider is making sure that you know how to take care of your dog and the safety precautions that you need to take. So just like if you were getting a new baby, like you need to know babies can't drink water the first few months of their life or how many months it is. I don't know, I don't have kids. But I know there's certain things with babies that you can't do, like they can't eat honey, they can't eat like little things and stuff like that. So just make sure that you know the basics of having a puppy. So don't keep any collars or anything on them when they're in the crate because it can be a choking hazard if they get stuck on it. There's plenty of safety precautions that you need to know when you have a puppy and that'll save you a lot of bet bills and also save you a lot of just mental stress of whether your puppy is okay or not. Lastly, if you work all day, then it is not a deal breaker to get a dog. It's better to have a dog in your home than to have a dog at a shelter highly stressed. So I definitely recommend getting a dog even if you do work all day and you want to help a dog out then definitely get the dog. Um, just make sure that you are looking to have someone come in and out of your home if you're out for an extended amount of time so that they get used to the sitter, they can take them out when you're not there. You can also consider daycare at the sitter's home. 
So if you don't want them to be in a facility with a bunch of other dogs, then you can just have them at a sitter's home and you can pick them up every day just like if you were dropping them off at school. There's plenty of options for you to consider. If you still want to have a dog and you work a lot, just make sure that you're looking at all of that stuff before you get your dog so you know how much it's going to cost you and if you can actually financially afford it. Lastly, if you don't want to put your dog with a sitter or have them sit at their home, you can also, if you're getting a puppy, get a board and train program program where you leave your dog for a certain amount of months, they train your dog for you, they board them for you, so you still have a couple of months to figure out what you're going to do with your schedule, maybe work something out with your job, but at the same time you're paying for the dog to be trained and boarded rather than just paying for them to be boarded every week or you know taken out every week by someone else i think you're kind of getting it two for one you're getting them trained and you're getting them boarded so just something to consider it is probably a more expensive option but in the long run you're getting more out of it other than that i think that is pretty much it for this video if you have any other questions please leave them in the comments and i'll try to make some shorter videos if i can answering those specific questions but if there's any other broader topic then maybe i'll do another video on it as well so just go over to the description there's going to be a bunch of links down there there's going to be a medium article for this video of course it's already been up on the site and other than that i'll see you guys next time